So they're asking us to find the least common multiple of these two different polynomials. So the first one is 3z to the third minus 6z squared minus 9z. And the second one is 7z to the fourth plus 21z to the third plus 14z squared. Now if you're saying, well, what is the least, you're, you're familiar with least common multiple of two numbers. Uh, one way to think about them is if I were to find, say, the least common multiple between, I don't know, four and six, you literally could look at all the multiples and see which ones are which one is least. So you go four, eight, twelve, sixteen, so on and so forth. You could do the same thing for six. You could go six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, so on and so forth. And you immediately see that they do have they'll actually have multiple common multiples, but the least of the common multiples you immediately see is going to be twelve. Now another way to think about it is, is to actually factor these numbers out. We could view four, you could view four as being two times two if you look at its prime factorization. And six is two times three. So you could say that the least common multiple, the LCM of four and six is going to be, or it's going to be equal to, well it's going to have to have the factors of both of them. So it's going to have to have two fours, two times two. And it's going to have to have a two and a three. Well, we already have a two. In fact, we have two of them. So in order to be divisible by three, we have to be, in order to be divisible by six, we have to have three as one of the factors. And so when you look at it that way, you say, hey, look, we have to contain all of the factors of each of them. We have to have at least two twos. And we have to have at least one three, because the two twos take care of this one two right over there. And you see that this is also going to be equal to 12. Now when we think about it for polynomials, we're going to think about it a little bit more. It's, a, it's essentially the same idea, but we're going to think about it a little bit more with the second lens. Where we're going to think about the factors and say, well, the least common multiple needs to contain the factors of both, but it shouldn't contain more than that. You can always find a multiple of two polynomials by just multiplying them, but we don't want to find just any multiple. We want to find the least common multiple. So let's factor each of them. So this first one. 3z to the third minus 6z squared minus 9z. Let's see, immediately, let's see, all of these terms are divisible by 3z. So let's factor out a 3z. So it's 3z times z squared, if you factor out a 3z out of that. Let's see, it's going to be minus 2z, if you factor out a 3z out of that. And then minus 3. And notice, if you were to distribute this 3z back, you would get exactly what we have up here. And so let's see, can we factor this further? Can we think of two numbers that if you multiply them, we get negative three, and if we add them, we get negative two? And one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, since their product is negative. So let's see, it sounds like negative three and positive one. So we could rewrite this as three z times z plus one times z minus three. I think I've factored this first, this first polynomial about as much as I can. One times negative three is negative three. One z minus three z is negative two z. So that looks good. So now let's factor, now let's factor this other character over here, this fourth degree polynomial. So every one of those terms look like they're divisible by seven z squared. So I could write this as seven z squared times z squared, when you factor out a 7z squared here, you're just left with z squared. And then plus, it's 21 divided by 7 is 3. z to the third divided by z squared is z. And then plus 14 divided by 7 is 2. z squared divided by z squared is 1, so it's just going to be a 2 there. And so this is going to be the same thing as 7z squared. And this can be factored into, let's see, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3. So z plus one times z plus two. Now let's think about the least common multiple. We've factored each of these just the way that we, when we did the prime factorization for regular numbers, now we have factored this down to, uh, to as, as simple expressions as, as we will find useful. And so the least common multiple of these two things has to contain each of these factors. So the least common multiple's gotta contain a three z, it's got to contain, and let me, let me expand it out a little bit. It's got to contain a three. It's got to contain a z. It's got to contain a z plus one. 
z plus 1. It's, I don't have to write a little dot there since I'm, so it's got to contain a z plus 1. It's got to contain a z minus 3. Let's see, it's got to contain a 7. We do not have a 7 here yet. So we have to include, we have to include a 7. So I'll put the 7 out front with the numbers. It's got to include a 7. It's got to include a z squared. Well, we only have a z right now, so let's throw in another z. So I could throw in another, I could write 7, I could put a z out front, or I could just make this a squared. It still contains that z, but now we contain another z, or we're multiplying by another z to have z squared. See, we already have a z plus 1 in here. We need a z plus 2 as well. z plus 2 as well. And there you have it. This is the least common multiple. If I were to write it all out in a neutral color, it's going to be 21z squared times z plus 1 times z minus 3 times z plus 2. <laughs> see, I say 2 and I write 6. z plus 2. And we are all done. And I really want you to appreciate this is the exact same thing we're doing when we're doing, uh, or a very similar thing than what we're doing when we're finding least common multiples of regular numbers. We're looking at their factors, and in the case of numbers, prime factors. And then we say, okay, the least common multiple has to contain each of, has to, has to be a superset, has to contain all of these, but we don't want to contain, you know, I could multiply this times, times 100. It's still going to be a common multiple of these two, but it's no longer the least common multiple. Likewise, 12 is the least common multiple of four and six. If I just wanted a common multiple, I could multiply that times 100. 1,200 would also be a multiple of four and six, but it wouldn't be the least common multiple. So we don't want to do that. Hopefully you found that interesting.